So um, we've heard an um, excellent talk from Dr. Moon about you know, how to assess these patients and you are now about to embark on uh, such a case and you are worried, oh, is he going to come off bypass or can, can I predict, is he going to need MCS? So the outline of my talk is going to be just give a background and look at some published evidence. Do we have anything which can help us to determine who is going to need the MCS support? Then I have a couple of slides on the sure results and then the practice we do for post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. So this is a devastating complication and I'm sure most of you who have been practice for a long would have experienced this at least once or twice. And this is sort of incidence is varies between one to six percent, but uh, in in most of the units it's between 0.5 to one percent, with a dreadful outcome with you know, without any further intervention. It's between 50 and 70 percent. Even with MCS support, the outcome is not great. Usually happens after a long day, when you have done a very complex case. You're tired. The morale drops. Feeling is you know it's a disappointed feeling. And also everyone looks at you because the anesthetist has done its work, he's on a lot of inotropes and uh, the perfusion is watching you and the scrub nurse is looking at you, what are you going to do next? And so this is where the decision time comes. As I said, if you don't do uh, MCS, they're usually death on table. Um, so this is just, this is what will happen uh, if you don't come off vipers, then this is just uh, my colleague Neil Howell will give an, um, you know, a talk on how to cannulate and how do you manage such incidents if you, if you actually encounter one. So when we look at the predictors of MCS need in these uh, post cardiotomy uh, shock, uh, cardiogenic shock, the real paucity of data. Because uh, what we have is only retrospective studies where they just look at case series of 20 or 30 cases at the maximum is 100 cases from Leipzig and there is no comparison between the non-PCCS patient that means there is no uh, multivariate analysis or invariate analysis to look at which parameter actually predicts. So the only way I can actually uh, give some conclusion is to look at survivors and non-survivors and also from the published case series look at what is strikingly different from the conventional cardiac surgery group and get some uh, a kind of conclusion from it. So I thought if we can get some idea about the patient related factors and the operation related factors which can guide us to say oh this is going to be an MCS needing for an MCS maybe we should refer to a an unit with an MCS support. So let's look at some published data. This is Harfield group. They looked at seven years um, data um, they have had 31 patients. I think they've excluded the primary graft dysfunction from heart transplant out of this. Their uh, mortality is 65%. Um, although they managed to wean around 50% of the patients of the ECMO, but they still lost patients after weaning from ECMO. But a consistent story is before going on a, um, a mechanical support, patient had been hypotensive with high CVP with increased inotropic support. So if you have someone with a low MAP, high CVP with a very high inotropic support with acidosis and lactate, I think mean was over six and multiple coming off and on bypass. So you had an attempt to give a rest, come back, put a balloon pump, give a rest again and then come back. And by this time, the bypass time is quite significantly elevated. And this is the sort of a story comes out of their paper that if you had a problem um, during the operation or even if you had a straightforward surgery, but if you come off at the end with these par hemodynamic parameters, you're going to need um, MCS support. Now, the Scottish group published on a small series over 20 years. This is a non-transplant unit. Um, but when you look at their patient population, over a third of them are emergency salvage surgery. I think it's more, most of them are aortic dissections. Now, 25% were redo surgery and over a third of them are combined valve and bypass with a mean logistic euro score of 21. So what they say is if you have an advanced age in an emergency surgery in a poor LV patient, you are highly likely of getting worse outcome and also going to need an MCS support. So if you look at the two, the, the Leipzig uh, 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 group paper, one is 70 patients and the other one is on 100 patients, the consistent story is that they had high incidence of patient going 
to surgery with who had CPR, 50% and 60% of CABG cases. So they are all emergency, salvage CABG. And a very high proportion of them had an acute infarct. So maybe their practice on those days was to do an emergency CABG in these patients. Maybe it has changed now. And then a year later, they further published over 100 plus patients. When you look at them, over a third, third of the patients were either complex valve and graft or mitral and graft or other procedure, which is post-infarct VSD, dissection, pulmonary endotrectomy, pulmonary embolectomy, those sort of procedure. So we are having a consistent theme coming out from looking at these case reports. So if you have an old patient, ORLV, a lot of comorbidities, who is going to have a redo surgery, complex valve and graft, this is a combination that you're going to need high incident of MCS support. Now this is an interesting paper from Mayer Group and they looked at 45 patients. You can see over half of them, they've had problem intraoperatively. So they either had a problem with an RCA uh, graft kink, they have to revise a graft in a CABG patient or they've had issue with a paravalvular leak or they went in to do a CABG but couldn't graft. So if you have more, if you go on to do a complex operation but then end up doing an incomplete procedure or you had a problem at the time of operation, then again you're going to have a uh, high risk of developing a mechanical circuit, needing a mechanical support. So this is not entirely hot post-cardiotomic cardiogenic shock, but this is the only paper I could see in adults on the vasoactive inotrope score. Um, I'm sure um, mo some of you might have, or most of you might have experienced where when you do a complex infective endocarditis patient, <laughs> when you go on bypass, the patient become vasoplegic. This, um, and the anesthetist is on a lot of noradrenaline, they are starting vasopressin. So that is actually a poor marker and that is probably is going to one of the predictor of needing an MCS support. And in this trial on 29 patients with MI, a proportion of them had CABG. They calculated the vasoactive score. What they say is if you have a score of 30 to 40 means you're going to need ECMO support because as soon as you go on VA ECMO, can rapidly reduce the vasoconstrictor need and give adequate cardiac output. Within 24 hours, the scenario changes. And although this is not pure PCCS, but I'm sure this holds true for um, cardiac surgery patients as well. Um, this is an infant uh, undergoing uh, cardiac surgery in a single uh, pediatric cardiac unit. And when they looked at the same vasoactive uh, and inotrope score, you can see the predictors of worse outcome and the need for mechanical circulatory support is significantly high if you have high VIS score. That we see in the transplant population, this is particularly worse when we transplant a, a, a long-term LVAT patient because they are on a continuous flow and when they go on bypass, we see a massive drop in blood pressure. We, you know, perfusionist is flowing massively and we are on already on noradrenaline and vasopressin and we are now having to give meth methylene blue to keep the blood pressure. And we know that it is associated with poor prognosis, especially if it is resistant to noradrenaline and it also is associated with the high incidence of, uh, you know, prolonged ICU stay and mechanical ventilation if the patients survive. And here, it's ECMO should be considered in these uh, patients. So, we have a story coming out where, um, from these uh, case report or case series, that if you have an older patient with a high BMI, poor LV uh, function, endocarditis, multiple comorbidities, if they are vasoplegic on bypass, if you're doing an emergency surgery, there's going to be likelihood that MCS support is going to be needed. If you are embarking on such a patient, but then you end up with a neatrogenic injury, or you've had a technical difficulty, you couldn't graft a particular vessel, then you end up with a long cross clamp and bypass time, and a myocardial protection issue, I think you, you are probably going to end up with a MCS, need for an MCS support. So what it does is, you can see this patient's on 16 infusion pumps and a filter and a balloon pump. And what a VA ECMO does is just to rest to the heart and lungs, give good cardiac output, prevent multi-organ failure early so that you can just be on four infusion pumps and a good flow.
So just very quickly, we looked at 26 patients uh, requiring VA ECMO for PCCS in the last five years. It's 0.56% incidence. Mean logistic error score is 17. Over half of them are redo. And we managed to wean almost 70%, but our successful discharge is 50%, and most are explanted. Not a single patient needed transplant or implantable LVAD. Uh, the, 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 the reason for our good outcome is an MDT approach and um, we assess and even preoperatively look at the likelihood of the MCS need and we come out sometimes in these high risk patients electively on MCS support. Um, so what the practice we do currently is that if a patient doesn't come off bypass on the table then we involve the on-call bad surgeon on the ECMO intensivist so that this operating surgeon and anesthetist don't make the decision. There will be an MDT discussion on the tape, uh, uh, in the operating theater. The patient should have had a complete corrective surgery. We don't want, if you've taken a redo patient for a, with, a, with an occluded LAD and you couldn't find LAD for 40 minutes, there's no point in putting an MCS support unless transplant is the only bailable, uh, only bailout. So we have, that, that's, that, that the patient should have had a complete corrective surgery. And if the MDT f felt that uh, the high chance of good outcome, then we go ahead. And then the MCS and ECMO team will look after the patient. So it's a devastating complication. Early identification and institution of support is the key. What is needed is a well-designed multi-institutional prospective study, which will tell us whom and when it should be used. So thank you.